Hey guys, how's it going? Today we are working in the cut flower garden, planting our ranunculus and anemones, the first flower crop of the season. First off, here is the cut flower garden, all cleaned out and ready to roll. This will see some changes this year in that, you know, the mulch pathways are going to become grass. Uh, but this is the row we're going to be planting in today, which is the closest to the driveway. I think that'll be nice. We'll be able to see the ranunculus and anemones a lot. And then we can kind of graduate up in size, like height, with our flower crops so that we maybe have like a layered effect going on. And when this crop is done, I'll probably uh, dig them all up and get them ready for storage and plant zinnias in their spot because zinnias look good for pretty much the entire season. And here are all of the ranunculus and anemones we're going to be planting today. You can see these here were the ones that I soaked and pre-sprouted early, got them potted up in the greenhouse. Uh, so we will be ahead with those. I'm gonna plant those in the front of the row and then we will plant the other ones. This is kind of the second shift that I started in the soak and pre-sprout process. I was looking, can you guys see all those roots? <laughs> They've been in these trays for a little too long. Usually it's like a 10 to 14 day process, more on the 10 day end of things for me in my experience. And they've been in their trays for 17 days. I think it'll be all right. So the soaking and pre-sprouting process isn't necessary. You don't have to do that. You can just pop your corms or bulbs straight in the ground if you want. But if you do that, it does buy you some time. Usually you get uh, blooms a couple weeks earlier than if you just pop them in the ground when they look like this. So what you do to soak and pre-sprout, which I've showed you a couple of times, uh, you put your corms or bulbs in water for three or four hours and let them soak. They usually swell up in size. It's amazing to watch the process. And then you line them up on just a little bit of soil in a tray, cover them with a little bit more soil and then you pop them somewhere typically that is right around 50 to 55 degrees for 10 to 14 days so I usually put mine in the basement I did not do that this time I uh, put all of these just I left them in the greenhouse where it did get quite warm that's why I think I've got so much growth going <laughs> on um, so you put them in a warmer spot than it is outside and so it just gets them started a little sooner so usually my pre-sprout trays don't look like this they look more like this one right here where you'll see it maybe a little bit of growth on a couple of real energetic ones uh, but typically you might see like a tiny bit like maybe a swollen growth point like this smaller one and then white roots so you can see that this is further along than something like this some of mine will come out looking like this with not much going on it's still worth it to plant them because most of the time they'll grow i've got quite a bit of prep work to do so last year we did till up this area because it was a raw piece of land it was really bumpy not smooth pasture and so we tilled it out so we could get everything smoothed out i'm not going to till this year for the most part uh, because the soil is still really nice and workable where we had crops planted and it was nice too because we were able to kind of walk the pathways down a little bit so that they're a little bit more firm because last year we were we're tromping through powder there for a little while uh, but I do want to put down a layer of biotone starter fertilizer land and seed compost I need to run my drip tape uh, even though we don't even have our access line our water line run yet I'll at least have the drip tape there indicating that there's something going on and there's something planted so when we do turn our water on we can hook it in and have it ready but just real quick when we plant our ranunculus and anemones we go like two to three inches deep and for ranunculus about nine inch spacing anemones about six inch spacing it's pretty straightforward. And if you have your ranunculus that look like this with no obvious growth coming from the top, they look like mini dahlia tuber bunches, you point them with the tentacles facing down. I mean, it's definitely easier to tell when you see growth on the top and you can see where the roots are uh, facing. When you've got your um, anemones, sometimes you can see growth on the top from last year. They're a little bit harder to see. This one has sprouted a bunch of roots. Let me find one that doesn't have roots right here you can see the growth from last year so we're going to face that up and then you can see little kind of like roots coming off the bottom that look dry hopefully this one grows i don't know but the roots go down uh, a lot of times the anemone bulbs are a little bit more white on the top and then they come down like taper down on the bottom and i'll try to get some close-ups when we get them in the ground but i am going to unload everything i have here and i've got to go get some compost and get that going aaron's going to help me with that step we are going to put some super hoops with some cloth over them too that's what i did last year and i think it really helped especially for the ones that are a little bit more tender and are coming just straight from the greenhouse. I don't want to just subject them. We don't have any freezing temperatures on the forecast, but I don't want to subject them to anything too cold. Okay, so let's get this bed prepped.
work is done and it looks good. So I sprinkled some Biotone starter fertilizer, land and sea compost. I do this before I plant any crop out here or in my raised beds. And then I ran my drip tape, which we have the type that has the emitter holes every six inches. And it seems counterintuitive, but you put the emitter holes facing up, not facing down. And you can see I just left tails here because we don't have our supply line out yet. I made them long enough to where we can make clean cuts. That way, if any dirt gets in the end, it's not going to travel all the way up here and plug anything up. So we'll make a cut, and then our supply line, you can see where it comes from. There's our irrigation boxes. So we'll make a new elbow off of this, and then run a half-inch water supply line all along this edge here. And then we tap in right here. And each one of the valves that we tap in with has an on-off switch. Last year, I ran three rows of drip tape per planting area. So like this one would be one, two, three. I found that that was a little bit too much and I was having to turn the valves off, which isn't a huge deal, but I would really like to hone this process to where I don't have to turn off valves if at all possible. And I think if I do a planting row on the outside and then one down the middle of these two runs of drip tape, I think it's gonna be plenty. So we'll be planting here, here, and here. I don't know if we're gonna need the whole row or not. We'll see. And then to tack down the drip tape, I do have these four inch landscape staples. I find that I have to tack it down like every four feet or so all the way down the run. Otherwise, when the water turns on in these, of course, it's gonna like shake the, the tubing. And then when it gets really hot, it kind of stretches out. So they get all wonky if I don't tack it down all along the way. And I've kind of learned that over time. I had some issues with it last year, even, even though I tried to do this, I didn't put them close enough together. I was going like every, I don't know, six or eight feet. So I'm hoping that that is helpful this year. And right along here, you can see where sprinklers are. So this is not a solid like straight line yet. Uh, once we get the grass planted, we'll have a nice sharp edge and we'll be able to tell a distinct line here. Makes it kind of hard to spread compost because I didn't really know exactly where to go. Just wanted to show you the enders here. So the drip tape slips onto the ender and then you just screw this piece. So this piece initially is up further toward the where the landscape staple is here. And you just screw it down on top of the drip tape and it holds it fast. And if you ever need to blow the drip line out for any reason, you can unscrew this end and it just makes it open. So I haven't had to do that, but it's kind of nice if we needed to, if something was plugged up or something, we could do that. And we have decided just to run new drip tape every year. That's one of the reasons why we decided to go with drip tape because it's uh, far less expensive than running the brown drip tubing. Um, and we have such hard water that it plugs up emitters pretty quickly. And so second year trying to use the drip tape, it just isn't efficient. Um, and we'll have some areas that weep a perfect amount of water and some that don't weep anything at all because they're so plugged. So anyway, it's just best for us to start fresh. In fact, we had somebody come look at our water system. They said that our water, so normal, um, like hard water, a high level is 10. Uh, I don't know what the scale is exactly, but they say 10 is really high and ours is 25. So just giving you an idea there. In fact, if I overhead water my seedlings, like I've got some delphinium seedlings in the greenhouse that have barely been alive and they already have hard water spots on their leaves from me just hose watering them. All right, it is planting time. We're gonna start with these that are a little further along first. These will be at the front of the row. So we'll get first flush of blooms from these. And then we will start in with these right here in the pre-sprout trays. After we're all done, you can see I got a box from Gardeners. I've got some cloth and some uh, super hoops and things that we'll put over everything once they're all done and planted. And I've got tags made for almost everything already. So I won't have to do that. I did bring some extra ones out just in case. Let's get into one of these and see what it looks like. These are the marshmallow ranunculus, one of my faves. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Okay, so we're just gonna come in here, pop it in the hole. We'll just bury it at the current soil level. You know what, I'm gonna move it over just a tiny bit. I try to line them up with the emitter holes. There's an emitter hole right here. So I know it's gonna get water right at its root system if I plant it there. Next one, we'll go about here. Remember about nine inch spacing on these. Ooh, I did bring a hand tool just in case. And then for the middle row, I'm gonna bounce it right in between. And then for the outer row, I'll line them up together. So it'll kind of be a back and forth sort of situation. They'll each have enough room to grow. It's 
So whether I'm planting plants that are already growing like this or corms that aren't showing any growth, that's the spacing I'm going to be following for this whole entire row. Until we get to anemones, in which case we'll go a little bit closer together. So here we go. <laughs> done planted watered in the breeze is starting to pick up a bit though so I'm going to cover this one before I hop to the next row and start planting there because I do have a few left doesn't that look fun I love it so you can see the larger plants start here and they go about halfway which these are 60 foot rows here so the ranunculus stop here and then I pre-sprouted and potted up not a 10 rather of the anemones nine of which made it and then I started in with our second this will be kind of our second crop to come into bloom and went all the way to the end there. As far as varieties, for ranunculus we have marshmallow, this is labelle champagne, then we've got salmon, then we've got labelle piketty, and then we have rose, then we have an unidentified mix of anemones, and then we have ranunculus romantic mix. That one spanned a great distance. It went all the way. I've got a hundred of those because they're so pretty. I missed one. What? Missed one. Always double check your work. This is a variety called black. And then we have purple jean. Only a few of the white variety made it out of the tray. I'm going to pot the rest of them up and see if they do anything. And then we've got, what is this? Oh, red. And then we had a few more rows right here. And the second row will just be repeat varieties of the larger plants up here, like more label champagnes, more, um, marshmallow things like that and this is how we're going to cover them these are super hoops which i absolutely love i've been using them for a few years they're really adaptable to the size of space you have i'm using them at their smallest size right now so they come in five pieces i'm only using three you can see the other two pieces sitting here so there's a base piece that comes up to here on both sides so with little screws and then there's this middle piece here and then there are two side pieces. So you can use one of these if you want, or you can use all three, uh, just depends on the kind of space you have. Uh, to connect them together, there are these little silver kind of sleeve things that you slip on the bottom of one, and then you can, if I can make connection here with one hand, there we go. They just slip together like that, really easy. Make sure to keep these in a baggie <laughs> handy easy pieces to lose. But even at full size, these plants aren't gonna need this much space. So using them at the smallest amount is perfect. They recommend going only three to four feet wide. These are 60 foot beds. So we're gonna go four feet wide and use 15 of the hoops. And then we will go through and cover with this summer weight. See, it's just a real sheer fabric once you get it all unfolded. That's actually double width right there and I can still see through it a bit. And then to attach it to the hoops, we use these clips. I love these clips because it eliminates the need to go find pavers, bricks, or rocks, or something like that to weigh the fabric down, which always rips the fabric for me. I always rip the fabric, and it always looks a little bit more untidy. I think this is gonna look a lot better, so I'm excited about that. So I'm gonna get all of these hoops set up, and then we'll see if Aaron will come out and help with the fabric, since it's such a long piece. I think this might be a 50-foot piece of fabric, maybe longer than that anyway. It'll be a little bit of a beast to manage all by myself. All done you guys all done first flower crop planted and it looks somehow more legit when you've got hoops with fabric it just looks like there's something really exciting going on it would take far less time had I not set up the super hoops and the plants 
probably would have been okay because they're pretty cold tolerant ranunculus and anemones both the foliage on top of the ones that were forced to grow early they may have suffered a little bit and that's why i feel like it's worth it just to go ahead with these hoops and it will keep enough heat in to where it will help the other ones grow a little bit faster as well i'll probably have to scoot that cloth up like take a couple of the clips off and scoot it up so that i can water probably not tomorrow maybe not the next day because i did water them in really really well today and it's cool-ish. Um, we actually turned on our water today so once we can get the supply line run then the drip will take off and I won't have to hand water them. But these clips are just so nice. I mean just unclip it and you've got access instead of having to like wad it up under a rock and I need two hands to reclip it though. Oh so nice. I've never used these clips though before and I feel like I've got more of them. Maybe I should use all the clips because I feel like our windstorms are just going to laugh right in my face <laughs> at my effort that I uh, put in today because we get some pretty strong winds. I'm hoping that everything holds. With my first bed here, I measured everything out. With the second one, I did not. It still turned out fine. And when I prepped this bed to handle the rest of the ranunculus that I had, I went ahead and amended the soil and ran the drip for the rest of it as well. I've got a bunch of spring crops, onions, and things that are going to come out here, and I'll probably just start in planting. As far as care on these, there's really not a lot other than keeping them watered consistently. Um, and that's one thing you just really have to keep your eye on. Anything you plant in the spring, uh, even though it's cool and you feel like things don't need as much water, you just got to keep your eye on it, especially if it's windy, because that wind can dry things out really quickly. That's what we have to look for here. And then last year was the first time I really grew them in any, any kind of quantity, like more than just a few pots full. And all I did was the initial amending, the starter fertilizer, the land and sea compost, that's it. I didn't do any fertilizing after that, and they were amazing. I don't know if it was a one-off year. I don't know if maybe they would have been maybe even more productive if I would have fertilized again, but I'm kind of just intending on doing the same thing with these this year, and we'll just see what happens. They're a pretty short crop. I think we'll get blooms from this first row Oh, maybe even by the end of April, which would be amazing. The rest will come out later on in May, typically. These are just such an easy flower. I mean, big color in the spring, uh, really productive flowers. And then once they're done blooming, I let the leaves stay on for a little bit, soak in some energy, and when they start to yellow, then I lift the plants up, clean off the bulbs, corms, and store them in the root cellar. And some of them didn't even get stored in any kind of medium. They were just left to the open air and they did just fine. And the nice thing about them is like, unlike dahlias, which take up an enormous amount of space if you want to uh, winter them over or store them, um, these do not. They're so little that they just are this little tray or a little box on the shelf. I mean, unless you want to grow a field of them, um, in which case you would need more space, but they're just wonderful that way, that they produce so much for you and yet take up very little space, very little work, I find anyway. I just really like them a lot. So you will be seeing updates when these start to bloom and probably you'll see them in some arrangements later on this spring. And that is it for today. I've got to go water the greenhouse and water the vegetable garden. I'm so glad the water is on now. We're going to test all the drip tomorrow and then hopefully we don't have to hand water a whole lot. Hopefully. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and we will see you in the next one. Bye.